Last week I talked about the different mechanics around the Barco Blaster Blade interaction. We talked about the skill pool, time check timings and rule actions. Today I want to elaborate on that video by going over some other scenarios that have the same core concept as the Barco Blaster Blade interaction. Before we begin, I want to address an important issue. Last week I made the following statement. This also works if you have a Barkle as Vanguard and ride Bluster Blade on top of him. This is however wrong and many of you luckily caught on to that. Barkle's skill doesn't work on a Vanguard circle because as you can see here, his wear condition states that he needs to be on the rearguard circle. I confused him with Tragic Claw because unlike Barkle, Tragic Claw does work on the Vanguard circle. Alright, now that that's corrected, let's go over some other scenarios because you guys had a lot of interesting questions after the last video. So let's go over them one by one. Note, if you're not familiar with the core concept of the mechanics behind the Barkle Blaster Blade interaction, then watch part 1 first, because I'm going to build on what was said on that video. First off, we have Wee Slasher. So how about two horses in one column? You call a unit on top of one of the horses, then also achieving Unite. Would the newly called unit get a 2k power from the horse that got retired? So to simplify this question, what happens if I call a unit on top of a horse? Let's find out. All right. We call two horses in the same column to achieve Unite. Now let's see what happens if I call Bluster Blade Liberator on top of one of the horses. We see that we have two horses out of abilities on standby because there was a unit placed in the same column for both horses. But we also see that a ruling action for overloading units for the front row horse is on standby. We know that we must resolve this first so let's do that. Alright, we have one horse still in the field and one horse is now in the drop zone. Let's resolve the other skill of the still existing horse first. We give the Bluster Blade and the Horsa both plus 2k power. Now let's see what happens if we resolve the outer skill of the Horsa that's in the drop zone. As you can see, no units in the field receives an increase of power, even though we resolve the skill, and the Bluster Blade was called in the same column as the retired Horsa. Shouldn't he at least get the 2k power? Well, no. To explain what is happening here, let's take a closer look at the skill of Horsa. The skill that Horsa has states, choose one of your units in the same column as this unit, and that unit and this unit get power plus 2000 until the end of turn. To use Horsa's skill, you need to choose another unit in the same column as the Horsa whose skill you are resolving. However, as with the retired Horsa, the moment you want to resolve his skill, he is located in a drop zone. And a drop zone doesn't belong to any column or row in the field. And because of that, there isn't any unit to choose to give the power to. And that's why the moment we want to resolve the retired Horsa's skill, no power was given to any unit. Horsa isn't the only one with this interaction. Neonectar has a unit with the same skill working called Tenacious Maiden Noel. As you can see, she gives 4k power to all units in the same column where she is located. But if you call Noel on top of her, her skill will go on standby. But the moment you want to resolve her skill to give the power, she be at the time already in a drop zone. And because of that, no units in the field get a power increase. Gold Palace Unite skill is an interesting keyword that in some rare occasions works or even conflict with the overloaded unit ruling, like Horsa for example. But there is an even more interesting keyword that really embodies this mechanic in Vanguard, and that is Harmony. Eduardo Kenji, if I can trust Google Translate, asked some interesting questions regarding to Harmony. But let's talk about this last question, because this one relates to overloading units. What happens to harmony if I call units or write units on top of each other? A unit can become in harmony if another unit is called in the same column as a unit with the harmony ability. If this happens, both units become in harmony, even when the called unit doesn't have the harmony ability. This will always happen as long as the already present unit has the harmony ability. A unit can lose the harmony state in the end phase or when one of the associated units is removed from the field. There are two different types of harmony skills, one that states if this unit is in harmony, these can either be continuous skills or other skills that activate in special situations. And the other type is when this unit becomes in harmony. The latter are skills that will activate if the unit is in harmony for a very brief moment. As long as they achieve this state, they can resolve these skills. So knowing that, let's see what happens if I call a Marineer on top of an already existing wonderful voice Laris. We see a couple of things happening. We see the ruling action for overloading units for the Laris, but we also see Laris harmony skill on standby. We must first retire Laris. Now that that's done, we can resolve the standby harmony skill, so Marineer becomes in harmony. However, because Laris is already gone from the field, means that we can turn Laris into harmony, and that Marineer loses harmony immediately. But because Marineer's skill states when this unit becomes in harmony, 
means that our auto skill is already on standby and then we can resolve it. This interaction also works on the Vanguard circle. Let's say I have Splash Dollar Rachel as a Vanguard and I have GB2 active. When I ride Laris on top of her, we can see the Harmony skill on standby, but also the ruling action for overloaded units on the Vanguard circle. We first move Rachel to the Soul and then we resolve the Harmony skill. Because Laris becomes in Harmony means that her GB2 skill goes on standby, and right after that she loses Harmony. We then resolve Laris Harmony skill. In both cases we have seen that the when this unit becomes in Harmony skill of the newly placed unit goes on standby. But the when this unit becomes in Harmony skill of the already present unit doesn't go on standby. Why is that? You would think that both units become in harmony, because harmony will always activate in pairs. And that's true in normal cases, when we don't overload units. But because the moment we want to allocate the harmony state to the two units, that the other one is either moved to the soul or drop zone. And because they aren't on the field, they can't enter harmony. Even if Bushrod announced that they in fact will achieve harmony, wouldn't change anything. Because their skill states that they need to be on either vanguard or rearguard circle to fulfill their skill conditions. This interaction with Harmony is something I like to call Overload Harmony, because we achieve Harmony by overloading units. And this isn't the only interesting interaction with Harmony, and Edward Kenji asked some other interesting question. But let's get to that in more detail when the new Bermuda set drops. Harmony is an interesting keyword with a lot of different interactions, and I'd like to go over them in more detail when I have a little bit more time on my hand. But with that said, I'm Mr. Timonip, and I'll see you guys in the next one.